Hi, this is Joe. Welcome back to Stock Talk. And uh, thanks for your requests and comments. Uh, they're really helping me with, uh, certainly the, the stock requests are helping design the show. Uh, and secondly, also giving me really good ideas for future content for the beginning. It's the beginning segment. So uh, keep that coming. Uh, for those of you new to the show, the, the bulk of the show is me taking your stock requests and giving my analysis on it. So if you have an interest in, uh, in getting a stock uh, analyzed, send it to uh, stocktalk at stockcharts.com or you can just put it in the comments area on YouTube. Uh, let's go ahead and get straight into the agenda for today. I want to talk a little bit about breakouts briefly. Um, a lot of this is going to take place while I'm going through the individual stocks, but I did want to spend a few minutes just looking at a, a few different uh, criteria that I think are fairly important when it comes to breakouts. They can be tough. I mean, looking at a lot of 52-week highs, you want to make sure you can narrow that list down to some that are of quality. I like to look at the DI lines to help with that, and then I also like to look at the volatility of the price action as well. Once we're done with that, we're going to go into uh, your requests. Let's go ahead and get into this first chart. And so what I want to do here is uh, kind of explain. So the, the question had to do with breakouts from uh, uh, rectangular patterns. Um, I sort of incorporate in ascending triangles as well as wedges into that. Um, I think all of these are have sort of the same thing. What you're looking for, some of the criteria you're looking for is going to take place in any one of these type of patterns. So on the left side, I have a... Um, I have the two charts and I have the DI lines underneath. Now I use the, the DI line set to 13 and I have the 25 line going across here. Uh, 25 is pretty important to me. I, I want to be able to see if, uh, if, a, if a stock has low enough volatility in its price pattern and its swings then the, the DI lines are for the most part are going to stay below the 25 line. And so we want to see during a pattern development, uh, when you're forming the wedge, you're forming the rectangle, uh, form an ascending triangle, you want to have fairly low volatility taking place during that, that pattern and developing that pattern. So um, I think the DI lines can kind of be a prereq prerequisite for that. The other thing that I do like to look for, and let's just assume we have an ADX line down here, and I'm putting it in blue, if we have an ADX line that's kind of moving like this, just flat and low and not really making a lot of bumps uh, along the way, then, then that also tells me I have low volatility. Because we're looking for two things before we buy a breakout. Number one, we want low volatility but, and, and we want low trend strength. So if I can find low trend strength is when ADX is low, obviously, and it's been low and stays below this 25 line for a period of time. But if I have all three lines below 25 and I don't have a lot of wiggle movement in uh, the blue line, into the ADX line, then I know I also have low volatility. And that to me is a really good combination to look to buy the breakout itself. And one of the things I like to key on is watching the DI line. So if price is moving up and testing these highs and then pulling back, we want to look for a time where the DI line, the green DI, which is, a, which is basically the strength of the buyers, pulls back and holds above the red during a pullback. If you notice, every one of these other ones, every time it pulled back, it crossed over. And then red moved up and crossed back down. Green moved up and then crossed back down. And then this time you finally held. It, instead of crossing back down, it held above the red line. That's another nice criteria to have when you want to buy the actual breakout of the red line going across. So if, I'm, if I want to have an order waiting and I want to buy the breakout, this to me is sort of the look that I want. Obviously with a, a ADX line that's just going sideways like that. If ADX is doing more like this, or if the green and red are popping up on a regular basis above 25, then you know you don't you have low trend strength because the ADX line is below 25, but you don't have uh, a low volatility situation. And in those cases, I think you have to be a little bit more careful about buying the breakout. So if we go to the right side, this is sort of the situation where you might have a pretty good overall pattern in place. 
but instead of giving you a little hitch right before it breaks out, it just goes and breaks out. And you're almost breaking out from an overbought condition at this point. And you don't have the green line, the green DI holding above prior to the breakout. So in this case, what I would prefer to do is let it break out and then buy the first pullback. And the first pullback should take place right around the breakout level. Uh, sometimes if it's really strong, it won't come all the way back down. But you want to see a little pivot form uh, on both uh, the DI line as well as the price. And I think if you have that combination in place, uh, then, then buying the pullback out of this breakout is actually uh, can be a, a really uh, a great way to get in the breakout pattern. So these are the two ways that I think I would be on the lookout for using these DI lines and recognizing the volatility of the ADX. If the ADX has got big swings and, and movement, you're probably better off letting it break out and then looking to buy a pullback rather than trying to buy the breakout itself. So this type of condition with low ADX and a cross and where the green holds prior to breaking above the 25 and prior to the breakout of price, uh, I think is a really good starting point if you want to truly buy the breakout itself. So hope this is helpful. I'm going to get into some examples and I'll show you one specifically that fits into this criteria over here so you can see it in, uh, in actual price action. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the charts now. Uh, before I do that, let me just briefly say my service is found on rabelstockresearch.com forward slash services. If you sign up for the individual package and use the coupon code STOCKTALK, you'll get the first two months for $50 so you can evaluate the, uh, uh, the product and some of the research that comes through. I send out two reports each week uh, that, that is gener generates a lot of different uh, stock ideas from. Uh, let's go straight into the stocks now. And uh, the first one is IDXX. Uh, this is actually a leftover from last week. Um, so look at how on the monthly chart, we've made this pretty big move uh, away from the 18-month line over the course of the last uh, 9 to 12 months. It's gotten itself pretty extended on the longer-term time frame. And then just recently, uh, the price has sort of jetted away from the 18-week line. And so I think we have both of these time frames, I think, and it's somewhat of an overbought camp now. I, I personally would consider, especially, again, if I bought this down, you know, say 300 or something like that at the right time, and it's made this big of a move, I would be making sure that I have scaled and taken some profits here. Uh, you know, it's probably due for some kind of a pullback before too long. SEDG, I'm going to follow up on this because I did get another request. Uh, I talked about this a little bit last week, but uh, based on what's taken place here recently, we had a little bit more of a drop down, especially yesterday was pr a pretty ugly day. I still like the way this is setting up. We're pulling back on the monthly chart to a rising 18 month line. Uh, we've got that in place. And then on the weekly chart, we have gone through a pretty good correction without a lot of selling pressure based on the negative DI. So when I have that combination, now I'm looking for, you know, something that tells me that, uh, you know, we're turning back to the upside. So this would be a break of the trend line. And now we're testing the lows. If we can come back up through this peak here, I think that would be pretty good confirming evidence that this trend is turning back in line with this trend. And so that's really what I'd be looking for at this point. Uh, you know, it's possible you could get an earlier buy signal potentially, but right now, based on what I'm seeing, that's really where I'd be uh, focused. Uh, WELL. So first of all, the monthly chart shows this big drop and then a rally back up into resistance. We're getting back up towards the old high. The momentum signs are pretty good on the weekly chart. We have good ADX condition in place. MACD is confirming. Um, and so let's just use this. I'm going to use this chart and spend a few minutes on it because it, it meets a few of the criteria that I was talking about uh, with respect to the breakout. So number one, if we looked at this back in here where this was working sideways and you form somewhat of like a triangle pattern, ascending triangle potentially, and then you had this breakout. Notice the position of the DI lines on this weekly. So we didn't have a green hold before the breakout. 
You see how red was above when this actually broke out. And then we got confirming evidence with green breaking out with price. So that's good. But I'm not necessarily going to buy that breakout. I'm going to wait to buy the pullback. And we see that green actually came back. It overran 25 a little bit, but it held well above uh, the red line. And we came back to the 18-week. So if we take that into account, we know we have a pretty good condition in place on the weekly chart. Now, I had a request for, from someone who wanted me to give a little bit more detail into how I might manage a position. So I am going to spend a minute or two on this just to show you uh, in terms of my thinking and my thought process. I don't like to dictate how you trade, uh, but I can give you some ideas as to way how you could look at things. So. Um, on this, I've drawn in this trend line, and if you notice, uh, let's just look at what Green DI did. So Green DI came up, and it actually held during this pullback. So you broke the trend line, but you actually had didn't have green crossing over above 25 or anything like that. But it ended up holding above the red line during this pullback right here. And the other thing I want to point out is notice this red bar. So we have this break of the trend line, then we have kind of an ugly red bar. If you can take out that red bar to the upside, that's a pretty bullish sign. Taking, taking out a big red bar it often is a, is, a bullish, is a bullish sign. So um, notice also that the MACD was crossing above zero. And we had a little bit of a form of a pinch taking place. This is all taking place at the same time. So I feel like for me, the, the, cro the cross of this horizontal line getting back above this red bar is the trigger point in the entry for me. And that's why I put this down as an E here. Now for me, I don't like to use really tight stops. I used to use tight stops and I found that I got stopped out of a lot of things just by a little bit of noise. So I would go back down to the prior swing low and use this as my stop. So in this case, I'm, I'm gonna use round numbers. Let's say I'm in at 75 and a half and the stop is down around 71 and a half. So I'm risking $4 in this trade. So one R, if anyone's looked, uh, heard or read any Van Tharp, you got uh, one risk unit is basically your entry down to your stop. So that's one R. If I add that one R level up to the upside, I know that up around uh, 79, 79 and change, something like that is where I've basically made what I risked. So at that point, I want to do something. I might take this stop and move it all the way up to break even. Um, I'll probably take a small pars partial profit here, take a quarter of a position off at this point. Uh, but at a minimum, I want to raise the stop. I want to do something at 1R. And then at 2R, I might take another piece. So if I take a quarter here, maybe take another quarter here. If I, if I didn't take a profit at 1R, maybe I take a third at 2R, and then I raise the stop a little bit more. So um, I like to use these levels in conjunction with price resistance to sort of determine where the target should be. If I go back and show you the weekly chart, you can see that the target area is up here around 90. So I want to make sure that I've got at least room to 3R, you know, at least room to 2R, but preferably 3R to hit that to hit 3R before hitting any major resistance over here. So that's kind of how I put this together, looking at the longer term time frame on the pullback, and then I'm using this as a tighter pattern to be able to get in and use the last swing low. In this case, it was $4 away. But again, I like to use a little bit more room. You could have come in a little bit tighter if you wanted. Uh, but I want to give it enough room so that I can reach that higher target up there. So that gives me the potential to make, you know, in the last half up at the three or four R uh, level. And then I could trail a stop off the 18 or I could use prior swing lows as well. So anyway, I spent a little bit of time on that, but I wanted to make sure I covered how I would manage a position uh, in that regard. Let's get going on to the next stock. So this stock made a minor new high, this NVCR, but you can notice it didn't make any follow through there and MACD didn't confirm that peak. And then notice the volume that came through pretty violently. So I'm not really interested in buying this pullback. In fact, I might consider looking at this, again, if I was in this earlier, considering this as sort of a negative that maybe this is going to take some time and maybe I should be doing some selling here. Uh, I, I don't. I think this is sort of a mess right now. So, supports around 175. Uh, I think it's going to take some time before it can get going again. 
SWIR, I like what's improving, how this is improving on the monthly chart, but let me just point something out. So 20 is a pretty key level. If you notice, we poked up and tried to get through 20 here and failed. Tried to get through 20 here, but by the end of the week, it failed. Uh, here, it failed at 20. Here, it used 20. Basically, it got through and then kind of came back to the 20 area and held it. And then back here, it failed at 20, failed at 20, failed at 20. So I know that that's a key level, historically speaking. And, and these stocks do have memories. So I, I know that this is kind of key, just looking at what's taking place recently. So I want to make sure we can get through 20, I think. Uh, I, I, overall, I don't really mind what's going on here. I think there's a lot of improvement taking place. I just know we're at a very key level. So I want to see price action through that area uh, would be what I would be looking for. VRAY. Uh, so this is a little different. So if we look at the monthly, we had the decline phase and then we turn back up. Um, it's made a really nice move, but we're starting to get into some resistance here around seven and a half. And if you notice, we didn't build a big base. We didn't come down, go sideways for a significant portion of time. We basically went down and then reversed. So to me, this qualifies as a V bottom. Now, th that's not necessarily negative when you're doing it off of a low like this, but we've made such a big move now and we're up against this kind of violent decline area, seven, seven and a half, you know, eight, somewhere in here I think is going to be a problem area uh, just based on the most recent rally and MACD not confirming and ADX not confirming I think this is a pretty good spot to cut some uh, if you're in this uh, I wouldn't necessarily be interested in being a buyer uh, just because of how far it's moved and the fact we're getting closer and closer to that resistance area PTON is starting to pull back to the 18 week I think this is the key to this pattern we have a break of the downtrend line that's taken place. And now we're coming back to test the 18 week. If we can do that and kind of come back and hold this 18 and then start to turn up, I think that would be very bullish. So I'm, I'm really kind of watching to see if this can hold the 18 week and then start to show signs of buyers stepping up again. The overall pattern is pretty good. Strong move to the upside with good ADX and the decline phase had low ADX. So I think the bias is still to the upside here. ZYXI. So um, we, we made a big move on a spiky high up at 30 and came down pretty hard. And now we're trying to hold the 18 month line. We have good ADX condition on the, 80, on the 18 month, but it's laying on this 18 month line and it scares me a little bit. I'd be watching this. I wouldn't be buying this. I want to make sure this comes up through resistance. Uh, now around 17, 17 and a half. I view this sort of as a uh, sideways, like, almost like a basing pattern that's developing. And if it can hold support, it's going to come all the way back down to 10. But if it works sideways and then works its way back up through here, then I think you have a much higher probability play that has real potential to the upside. Uh, so for now, I'd probably be waiting and watching. I and mean, if I wanted to trade this, I guess I'd be looking for it down in this low area for a trade back up into resistance. That's something you could think about if you have that skill set. BBW. So a big move up into resistance, right up into this prior peak at 20. And we're, we've got a kind of a spiky condition away from the 18 month line. Eight, the, look at the weekly chart. The ADX has got up to 84. I mean, that's really high. It's really rare to see a weekly ADX get up to that high. Now it's turning down from there. I would not be surprised for this to spend some time in a consolidation pattern or even work its way back down and meet up with the 18 week at this point. Not a bad spot to maybe consider taking some profits again if you bought it earlier. If you bought it coming out of this base and you haven't taken profits yet, then I, it would be prudent to do so at this point. Um, doesn't mean that the trend is over. But I like to scale and trail, scale out and then watch the consolidation if it holds and, and goes another leg, scale some more. Uh, but right now it's gotten, it made such a big move in such a short period of time. I think this is a good uh, time to, to uh, maybe do some reducing. 
NEE is attractive here. The uh, 18 month, we've pulled back to the 18 month, haven't quite reached it, but gotten pretty close. And now we have this opposing trend pattern developing on the weekly chart where the 18 has crossed down below the 40. Now, normally you think a downside crossover is a negative, but I talk about this in my book. It's it, To me, it's, a, it's an opposing trend pattern where the it's sort of like a sell signal that's likely to fail when the 18 month line is rising underneath. So we're kind of using when technical analysis doesn't work, we're kind of using that in our favor. And now I'm looking for this move to come back up through the 40 week and maybe see a little bit more confirmation with the MACD crossing above the signal line. I like the low ADX. So it's in a pretty good position. I'd like to see a little bit more confirmation that this is getting ready to start up again. NCR, another stock with the monster move up into resistance. See this move up to 50 and now we're kind of spinning around and we're pretty far away from the 18 month line. So the eight for the so the uh, monthly chart has gotten extended enough that I would like to see this spend a little bit more time consolidating, pulling back before I would be all that interested in it. The question we have to watch, I think, is we have pretty good uh, ADX condition on the uh on the weekly. But if we break the 18 week, then I think we're in for a longer consolidation phase, maybe check down a little bit closer back to support. And this turns into a longer correction wave, corrective process before it's ready to go again. If it doesn't break the 18 week, and in fact, this ends up working sideways a little bit longer, uh, I guess we should consider taking out this prior peak up here, uh, 48, 49, as sort of a signal that the trend is getting ready to go again. And maybe we're going to go ahead and break through the 50 level. So something to keep an eye on here in the short term. I, I like to frame these out because really you never know which ones are going to trigger and which ones are going to come down. Uh, you just need to know where your key levels are. Key level here is up at this prior peak and also the 18 week to the downside. If we break the 18 week to the downside, expect more corrective uh, action. SIG, I like what's going on here. So if I look at this and I say, you know, if I had a trend line drawn in, we broke the trend line and had really nice follow through. Now we need to pull back. I mean, this is the process of turning a long-term trend around, but we're, we're you know, the the 30, the 30 uh, 18 month is down at 33 and the price is at 71. That's pretty extended. And I don't really, I, I don't really want to buy that far away unless I'm looking to trade it. Uh, and there really isn't a trading pattern in place right now. The other thing that I would tell you is if I look at the weekly, we, we made a new high higher high here and MACD has not confirmed that. So starting to show signs that maybe this is getting a little tired and maybe that maybe we're going to get a little bit more consolidation to take place that will alleviate this overbought condition on the monthly. So that's sort of what I'd be on the lookout for there. SKM had a very nice breakout. You can see this on the monthly. Uh, the true breakout level was down here taking out these peaks. Uh, in my opinion, that's where it is. Now, I know we exceeded these prior highs and even exceeded these, but when I'm looking at the consolidation pattern, this was really the breakout level and we got good DI confirmation on that breakout. Now we might fiddle around the 30 area and, you know, just consolidate a little bit and maybe shake some people out who think that 30 was the breakout level. And if it comes back down through 30, it's like a failed breakout, but it's really not. I think as long as we stay above these two peaks here, I think this is in really good shape. Uh, it just needs a little bit of time to set up. Uh, it's not, if I wanted to play this short term, I would buy, the, I would be looking to play this off the daily chart coming back up through the 40 as a short term trade, but I would prefer to see this pull back a little bit more, or spend a little bit more time consolidating. And I think that sets up a much bigger play uh, on the long term charts. WDC had a, a very nice move on the monthly chart, moved back up and took out this prior high, but it did so when it was overbought. Notice how it was up one, two, three, four, five, six months, seven months. I mean, and, and you're breaking out when you're up four, five, six months in a row. That's not usually a good breakout pattern. Plus, we have this prior resistance up here. So what I want to see happen now is I want to see how it handles the sell off. Does it consolidate in an in a, uh, orderly way and not give back a lot, make it more of a shallow pullback and let the 18 month catch up, get back up maybe closer to 60 or something like that. So we 
So we don't have such a distance between the 18 month line and the price action. And I think if we can do that, then this sets up for the next up move. In the short term, look at what happened. It's not really short term because it's a weekly chart, but we made a higher high in price and both the ADX made a lower low and the MACD made a lower low. Uh, lower high. Both made a lower high. And so that tells me that we're in a consolidation phase. Probably want to come back down and check out support in the lower 60s, 62, 63 area. And that's where I'd start to evaluate how this looks down here. I personally like to see the 18 and the 40 come a little bit closer together before we get the next setup. And maybe that is going to be where MACD comes down closer to the zero line. Something to be on the lookout for there. ATOS with a monster breakout. Let's just look at the weekly chart. We had uh, a really nice move coming up through five, a strong ADX condition. On these smaller cap stocks, look at the volume. The volume is probably more important than the indicators. I want to see big volume action. And you can see how there was massive volume coming into this prior to the breakout. That was a good early warning sign and something to be on the lookout for in small cap and micro caps. I almost look at volume as being more important in those than I do, uh, than I do the indicators. So just keep that in mind if we see a volume influx and the average volume increasing, that's a a very good sign to be on the watch for. Uh, this is pulled back now to the five area, so we're at a critical uh, level. I think based on how it spiked up there, it got up to 10 and kind of came down violently. I don't think we need to be in a big rush. It probably spends a little bit more time trading between five and seven and a half, but uh, the bigger picture pattern is improving, and I think if I were in this, I would definitely stick with it. B-I-R-E-F is an energy stock that has made a big run. Energy looks like it wants to take a little bit of a breather. Because this has made such a big move, I think this is a pretty good spot to take some profits here. Uh, considering cutting it back, I'm assuming that's what we're talking about when someone requested this. They, maybe they bought this pullback or got it down here lower. If they did, definitely be thinking of, uh, of cutting this back. And then we'll have to evaluate the pullback to the 18-week. LH got extended. Uh, we're showing some signs that the momentum is slowing after getting extended. This is not a bad spot to consider trimming uh, and looking for some kind of a pullback here. If we break the 18-week, you want to expect a longer correction process. Notice how the 18-week has gotten really far from the 18-month. If we break it, there's a lot of running uh, room to, to roam between the 18 and 18-week uh, and the 18 months. So you just want to keep that in mind that this probably has some pullback risk if the 18-week does not hold. UPS. Uh, now, this is a breakout at 120, nice run to the upside, and then we pulled back and had a pretty good move here and turned back up with MACD clicking higher. Now we've pulled back again, but we haven't pulled back enough. I, I would prefer to see you know, some more consolidation here myself before this is really ready to go again. There's nothing wrong with this. I'm okay with holding the stock. Uh, I just don't know that I'd be wanting to buy it. Even though this is the second entry after the breakout, it's a little extended still because it had such a big run up, especially recently. So maybe be a little bit more uh, careful on that. Uh, let's look at uh, last one here, ENPH. Uh, pulling back pretty hard, but we're pulling back to the 18-week line. Notice how on the weekly chart, we got back above the two moving averages and the MACD turned at the zero line with low ADX. This is a good pattern, but we need a test of the 18-week, 40-week area. And so I want to see you know, this pullback take place and then turn up. And if we have that, now we have almost like a little cup and a handle pattern developed on the weekly chart that is helping work in back in line with the monthly chart. We are out of time. Uh, I will get to any requests that were not taken care of this week. I'll make sure they're at the top of the list next week. Here's my contact information. Have a great week and we'll see you next time. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.